It's 9-11, a very hard day for America, and especially hard for you. You were the janitor, you cleaned the stairways, stairways 110 floors. Yes. Your office, sub-basement level one, there are six sub-levels. So the lobby, then sub one, sub two, sub three, sub four, sub five, six. You were at sub one, you, you punched in at 8.30 in the morning, you were late, you weren't going to go to work, it was a beautiful day, you were going to take off. Correct. You come into work because your boss asked you to, you came in, you were a little bit late. At 8.46 you heard an explosion from beneath you. From below. From below. Yeah. It was so big that it lifted you up. Everybody in the office. 14 people. 14 people. Lifted you up. Correct. A few seconds later you heard another explosion. Coming all the way from the top of the building. Turned out that was the plane. That was the plane. The first plane. Mm -hmm. But there was definitely an explosion before the first plane. Oh, 100% uh, sure. You have a lot of witnesses who were down there yes. who would confirm that fact. Yes. You told that fact to the 9-11 Commission? Not only did I tell the fact to the 9-11 Commission, but I gave them a list of the eyewitnesses that were there that experienced the same event as I did, and they were never called to testify. And was your testimony included in the 9-11 report? No, it doesn't show anywhere. It doesn't Actually, show it was anywhere. omitted. There's 576 pages on that book, and you won't find my name anywhere. Anywhere. You go all over the world and you speak about what happened to you on that day, the fact that you had one of five pass keys that uh, allowed you access to any and all doors in the complex? That is correct, and I have uh, a, a speech that I do all over the world as a motivation speech, but it always tells the real story of what happened in 911. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of respect all over the world for this kind of story, but when I come here, I am able to tell the story, but it's always either edited or uh, presented in a different way. And uh, only, I guess, C-SPAN had the only uh, pants to actually put my story without editing for basically uh, almost two hours. For and two hours? For two hours, they let me tell my story. The only media network that allowed me full coverage. Willie, how are you, sir? Thank you. All good. Uh, very tired. Too many interviews this whole week. Uh, getting ready for the memorial event. Uh, but, you know, it's part of my, uh, it's the busiest week of the year for me every time. So for the last 19 years, it has been nonstop for us. Do you ever wish this didn't happen to you? I mean, obviously we wish it didn't mm, happen to everybody. That's a good but... question. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, uh, you know, you're destined to do different things in life. And uh, I guess that fell on my lap and... Uh, I was able to, to, to handle it afterwards. So I think that's part of my mission. That's why it became a mission. So, you know, somehow uh, it's not that I wish it didn't happen to me. I didn't wish 9-11 happened. I didn't wish that, but I, you know, what came afterwards, I just was able to, to face it and to control it in a, in a way that was positive for the victims and the survivors. Yes, and, and we met in Plymouth many, many, many years. years ago, 2005, yeah. maybe. Yeah, Some, something like that. Yeah. yeah, when I did my second tour, I think in UK, or yeah. was it third tour? <laughs> one, awesome. one, three tours. <laughs> yeah, so I was just kind of, um, yeah, around about that time, waking up to the fact that what we've been told in the media was now very unlikely that the sort of um, uh, the real story, as it were. And my brother said, hey, we, we got to go and listen to this guy, William Rodriguez. He was a janitor in the North Tower of the World Trade Center complex. Yes. And the one thing um, I remember you you saying Willie which obviously struck home and it stayed with me ever since was that the first explosions were coming from the basement yeah I actually I uh, was on the basement and uh, at 846 uh, when I was talking to my supervisor we hear boom very very loud and it puts us upwards and uh, the first thing that came to my mind was that a generator just blew out on the mechanical room that was located on basement number two. I was on basement number one. So just by the sense that it pushed me forward, upwards, and, and, and that I felt it like that, it came uh, to my realization that it was something else. And all of a sudden, when I went to say it, 
we hear an explosion all the way on the top. So, you know, I always say that I, that I experience two different events. Mm -hmm. How is it? How is it for you then, Willie? Because I notice when I've seen you in interviews that the mainstream media, they very cleverly cut your story to make it sound like you heard a boom and it was the, 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 the um, first aeroplane. And yeah, well, so sometimes I think it's creative editing. Uh, and sometimes I think uh, is that they don't want to hear all the elements of what I experienced. Uh, you know, I cannot change what I went through. Uh, somehow, you know, I and, I and I said it, I was one of the first ones to say I could be wrong, but that's what I experienced. You know, people speculate that I say there were bombs planted in the building. I never, ever for a single time I said that. You know, but, you know, there were many explosions in the building and uh, it's not for me to say that, uh, to, to investigate that. It's for the expert and for the people that know about these things to investigate. You know, otherwise it, it could have been fax machines blowing up. It could be uh, a generator blow, blowing up. It could be many things. The thing is that it wasn't investigated on that level. And uh, that's what made us very angry at the very beginning. And that's why my story was used so much by the 9-11 Truth Movement because of what it meant. And, uh, but, you know, then all the issues that happened afterwards, the issues with the political secrecy, how the government was protecting the Saudi Ar Arabians that were involved, the royalty uh, that gave money to, uh, you know, most, most of the hijackers were Saudis, so, you know, you have an indication that there was other parties involved. Uh, you have the problems that we had to deal with with the uh, survivors uh, dying because of the exposure of, uh, of, of, of the environmental damage that was created in the area when they said that the air was safe to breathe. Uh, it, the problems that we had to go through to get a, uh, an honest memorial for the victims, it was politicized from the very beginning. So we have to fight very hard as survivors and victims and families to get a, something respectful to be built there. You know, so many things. It was so many bombardments of issues that we have to deal with that, you know, sometimes people lose uh, sight of all the issues that were behind 9-11 and uh, what took us there. And up to now, 19 years after, we still really don't know exactly what happened on that day. We're still looking for answers. We're still searching for you know, all the pieces because there's so many uh, secret uh, documents that have not been released and we want to have access. The families want to have access. We, we, when we, uh, the, the survivors and the victims did the lawsuit against the Saudi government, the government didn't want us to do the uh, uh, lawsuit because they said, it, it, you know, first, it was an ally. Second, it will open up a door box that will allow other countries to do the same thing to America on places that we have done bad things. So, you know, it was a uh, cash 22. So that didn't make any sense. Uh, 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 and for the survivors and victims, we only wanted the truth and to have closure, emotional closure. So we don't care about the polit politics and the espionage issues that they have. They have that issue, not us. But uh, to actually constrain the information that we need to get the, 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 the lawsuit going, for example, the a discovery process, the due discovery process to go as is supposed to be legally. You know, we have been dealing with obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. So it's been a battle from the day after 9-11 till now, we're still battling many issues. Willie, I don't want to gloss over your actions on the day, which can only be described as genuinely um, life-saving. And, and, and I don't often use the word heroic, but you were responsible. You stayed in the building. They call you the key master because you obviously, being the janitor, had the key to many uh, safety. I have the master key that opened all the doors. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have. Uh, uh, I was the person in charge of cleaning a uh, 110 uh, flight of stairs every day, 110 flo uh, uh, floors. And uh, it was humanly impossible for 
people that didn't acclimatize their body to be able to do that. And uh, this is a picture of the, of the stairs, as you can see. These are the stuff that I have to do every day, 110 flights every single day. Look at that. And uh, I work in the building for 20 years. My job, this is the master key, was what allowed me uh, to, to have access and plus the years that I have in the building, 20 years. The first 10 years, I worked for Governor Mario Cuomo, who was the governor of New York on the South Tower. I was a person that cleaned his office, but uh, he liked me so much that, you know, because I was a magician, uh, he loved magic and he would put me to do tricks for the uh, uh, journalist and he gave me other uh, other chores and little by little he was preparing me for what came out to be my mission after 9-11 because I learned how to write uh, uh, legislation, how to write laws and things like that and to get benefits passed for the, for the victims. It was all what I learned there. So, you know, one thing was connected to the other. The World Trade Center was my home after my home. Uh, I sometimes slept in the building, so I knew the building with my eyes closed. Uh, it was a place of uh, uh, social entertainment all the time. Here's, here's a video that nobody has seen before. I'm going to give it to you so you can see it. Is uh, uh, people dancing salsa uh, 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 at the World Trade Center. <laughs> I should say here, Willie, that I've had dinner in Windows on the World, which for our friends at home was the restaurant, right? Yes. On the 106th uh, floor, yeah. And and most of my friends were there. And the reason that uh, I was, I, I am alive right now, was because on 9-11, I came in late. Because every day I would go at 8 o'clock to Windows of the World because they gave me free breakfast. And uh, that day... I wasn't gonna go to work. And my supervisor begged me when I called for a sick day, he said, no, you have to make it because nobody. And I said, if you sign my card, I will go there. And that's when I made it to, to work late. And, but otherwise, if I was on time and I, the hour that I was supposed to be there, I would have been there by now. You know, it's just like it, I wouldn't have made it. Uh, I would have been trapped on the top. And the reason that I saved hundreds and hundreds of people opening the doors so they will escape was because I was trying to make it to windows of the world. I don't know how I was going to, how I was going to go through the fire, but I was going to figure out one way or the other, maybe impossible, but that was my motivating factor because I was desperate because of my friends were trapped and I knew it. And I had the master key. This is the master key. I had the master key that opened all those doors. So I knew that I can help them at that moment. And, and, and sadly, even though I'm recognized, I've been given every award you can imagine, uh, I've been named national hero, I'm only a survivor. And I don't feel that I did the job complete because I was never able to get to my friends and save them. Mm. Willie, when we say, see that infamous picture, I think they call it the falling man. Yes. And I think they traced who that gentleman actually was. He was a black gentleman that um, had some business at the, the, I don't know if he worked in the tower or he had some business. I think maybe it was Windows on the World. Did, did you know that chap personally? No, I did not. And I tell you something, uh, 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 when, I, uh, when I was there, when I came out, out of the building the first time, and I was doing, uh, by putting people in, in, in the first ambulance, what I saw was everybody looking upwards, looking where the impact was. And I saw the impact, I saw the fire, I saw the smoke, and I saw things falling out, which I saw was debris. Later on is when I realized it was people jumping out of the building. And that was just like, you know, it was too much. This is uh, 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 what I saw when I, when, when I went outside, look. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what I saw, you know, things falling down. I didn't know what it was. And of course, you know, it, it, it created a, a, a huge impression afterwards, not at that time, afterwards, when I finally uh, came down with the person on the wheelchair that I was going to help uh, uh, get first aid, I went to get the ambulance ready. And that's when I hear, don't look back, don't look back by the police, which was across the street from the North Tower, the South Tower already collapsed. And when I look back anyway, I saw all the bodies of the people that jump, jumped out of the building. And I was totally in horror. I, 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 it was just too much. And that's when I saw uh, that the bodies were uh, basically uh, squashed because just like the impact was so powerful that you couldn't recognize what was a head or what was an arm. And the only body that I recognized was one of a lady that I helped escape from the 33rd floor that I found her cut in half. And that was just like way too much for me. And that's when I hear run, 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 run. And I jump up right under the fire truck. And that's when the building uh, collapsed and, and, and buried me alive. And I stayed there for four hours until I got rescued. Yes, so you were literally the last man out of the building, which is uh, quite something in it in itself, isn't it? It's not only it, it just I, I see the, the images of that day and to see that because I look up and I saw when the building started collapsing. I was like, oh, my God, I, I have no place to run. And I just just lay right under the, the fire truck. And then the famous uh, uh, cloud of dust that created and, 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 and covered the whole uh, lower Manhattan, I was at the epicenter of it. And it was powerful. It was, uh, 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 you know, destroyed uh, uh, concrete, steel, everything. It, it just hit me. It destroyed my shirt. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is uh, what I went through. So obviously what I had uh, 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 right now after 19 years is that memory of that very moment, uh, how horrible it was, how horrible it was to be buried alive, how difficult it was to breathe under the rubble, how I was expecting death. I didn't expect to be rescued. Uh, and because of two television stations who said the last man out was there, that they pointed to the area, is where, where exactly they started to do the, the rescue effort. And if it wasn't because of that, I would have been uh, basically dead. I mean, just, they would have never have found me. And my worry was that because I saw bodies that were uh, so unrecognizable when I came out, my worry was that if they found my body, my mother was never going to recognize me. I was worried that my mother wouldn't have her son to be buried and uh, you know I was more worried about that than anything else mm -hmm. and sadly to say you know only one uh, over 1,000 families receive uh, body fragments of their loved ones everybody else didn't receive anything there's uh, still uh, thousands of, uh, of fragments that have not been able to be identified because they have not been able to extract DNA from it and not, not because they can, but because the science is not far advanced to be able to do that. That's why on the museum itself, they put up a repository that is private and where scientists can go and try to do the, the job once the techniques are more advanced to be able to identify these bodies. Mm. So Willie, after the event, the George Bush's cabinet, his his government they they tried to co-opt you as a as a speaker as a representative no they want they, they took me to the white house and uh, the president said this is the man that we need to get the latino vote we're talking about 30 million voters voters and uh, 
my his my my story was very romantic in a way for them you know from the janitor that saved uh, you know hundreds of people to the janitor that is writing legislation and is fighting every day on television getting benefits for the victims they love that they say this guy you know is is uh, a natural and uh, we can use him and they say you know we want to train you uh, with the techniques of politics and things like that. And we're going to send you to the governing institute in New Jersey. And I said, oh, okay, you know, I, I have no job. The building is gone. So I took all the training that th th they, they were giving me. But then I, that's when I started using those techniques against them uh, to try to get benefits for the victims, to get the 9-11 commission started because they didn't want to investigate 9-11. Uh, to get myself in, uh, uh, interrogated by the 9-11 Commission, uh, which as everybody knows, my testimony was not included in the final report. And, uh, you know, it's part of politics as usual over here. And, but I was able to, to use it also in a way that, it, to show the hypocrisy and the irony of the whole thing, you know, how they treat you one way, but once that you start asking questions, they treat you another way. Yes, of course. Um, we can maybe talk more about that. I don't want to put you in an awkward situation because I believe all the information you need, you know, I'm talking to people at, at home now, all the information you need to know about um, who orchestrated this event and why it's it's freely available on the internet in fact um did you hear willie of the study the university of fairbanks alaska yes um, I, I, but listen it, it doesn't surprise me there's been so many studies the problem and the issue here is that even with peer review uh uh um reports that have been done and things like that people has not been moved so that's the reality of it you know people uh, uh, there's an old uh, latin word said that almost build the cp the cp tower people love to be fooled so let's fool them you see and uh, uh, something that i came to realize 19 years after 9 11 that as long as I keep telling my story, my truth, my uh, emotional journey, and what I have uh, experienced, you know, people can change their mind. They don't have to change their mind. They can come up with their own conclusion. I'm not here to change anybody's mind. I'm just telling you what I went through. But the funny thing is that, Chris, I get more respect and love and, 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 uh, people wants to hear all this information outside the United States. I mean, I've been to countries that you would never expect me to have been invited. I went to Iran. I went to Malaysia. I went to South Africa. I went to Turkey. And they treated me better than here. The respect, the love. I met kings. I met, met prime minister. I met uh, uh, head of governments everywhere. You know, it's incredible. And they all wanted to hear it directly from somebody that was there. They didn't want to hear an expert or government report. They wanted to hear from the people that were there. So they were more intelligent than the people over here in that sense, talking about the government and, 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 and the scientists here. Uh, over there, they wanted to hear from somebody that went through the pain, through the experience from the very beginning to the very last moment, to the, have their own conclusions. And that was the right way to do it. Yes. It's interesting, isn't it, that a lot of people, especially my viewers on YouTube now, will, have, will be too young to even have, to have been born when the towers come down. I got two kids that were born after 9-11. I married a reporter. And I have these two kids, and the, the, the oldest one is 12 years old. And he's still finding stuff on the internet about me. And he's very surprised. He couldn't believe it. So, uh, it's, and I don't say anything in the house, you know, because uh, <laughs> the house itself is like a, like a museum of 9-11, you know, it's, it's articles about 20 years working in the building all over. And uh, so 
you know, I try to to keep one thing separate from the other, but it's hard because I'm I get journalists come here all the time. Uh, I get conferences that I give all over the world, so I'm always involved. So you know, but to them directly, I don't tell them anything. I tell them to research and then to ask questions. When they have the questions, you know, then I answer them. That's what I do. Did it make you angry, Willie, uh, um, knowing that the official narrative is is not the one that you experienced? Is, is that something you've you've had? No, because I was a magician. I was a magician, so I knew, you know, the whole thing about misdirection. You know, I I I, I learned with the best expert in misdirection in the world, uh, the amazing Randy. And uh, so I knew, and Randy doesn't agree with me on anything about 9-11, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I, I don't see through all the smoke and mirrors. I do. And, uh, you know, you see me here 19 years after, uh, after I, what I went through, believe me, I won't forget what I went, uh, the, 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 the experience that I had. This is me on 9-11. On, on Look at that. This is when I, after I was pulled from the rubble. This is me with the whole, as you see, that's when, when I rescued that uh, 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 fireman. When I went to your town and I gave the speech, this picture was not available. And I kept talking about how I saved one uh, fireman from under a truck and I stood with one of the boots with the feet inside and, uh, uh, and the guy was still alive. And I used to tell the story, people used to call me a liar because they couldn't find it. And then uh, this photographer years after came out with the photos that I never knew existed of me, you know, taking the uh, uh, fireman directly to the, um, to the ambulance, even though he died there. Then they found this other picture also on ground zero. Look at that. Me looking through, searching after I was rescued. I stay there. I didn't go anywhere. I stay there looking through the rubble. So to find that this stuff comes up years after, it just, you know, validates more my story. And uh, I tell you, I do it because of the memory of uh, so many friends that I lost on, on that day. The World Trade Center was uh, uh, a family. Uh, the workers there, they, they, they love each other, they knew each other. These are uh, some of my co-workers during that time, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, the, 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 the camar camaraderie was constant. You know, these are people, look at that. Gosh. These are workers there. So, you know, it's, it's, that's why I do what I do after all this year, because, you know, I lost so many people. I lost so many friends, over 200 people. And the emotional inventory that you go through of not having those people around in your life let, leaves you with a emptiness that, you know, is indescribable. So, you know, I, 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 19 years after, we're still fighting. And we hope that we will get... Uh, the, the truth of uh, exactly what happened, whether it's good or, or it's bad. We just want to know. We just need to know because it's, it's our right. Yes. And it's a slightly similar situation with me, Willie, because I'm a former Marine. I've had to watch my corps get sent to the Middle East um, wow. on bo bogus information two two illegal wars that we've had off the back of what i'm going to say is just a huge lie um men are coming back women are coming back with no legs eyes children don't no longer have a father or a mother and Sad. i'm a warrior so i have to speak up about this you have i'd to. encourage it's your, it's your mission yeah i would just encourage anybody listening as I, I always say when I'm life coaching, 
if you see it in the media, it's a lie. If you see it come out of a politician's mouth, it's a lie. Categorically, there's no exceptions. And when you get to my grand old age, you'll, you'll hopefully, well, hopefully it won't take you this long, friends. You'll understand what I'm saying. I'm, I'm almost there in <laughs> your age. <laughs> yeah. What are you, 21 now, Willie? 21, <laughs> almost 60 now. <laughs> You've got more gray hair than when I saw you last time. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, look at <laughs> mm. So, um, did did you have to have help, Willie? I mean, you went through an awful lot. You were the center of the spotlight for so yes. many different interests, from good interest to to, yes. to, 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 to bad interest to to neutral interest, which must have just been people not yes. interested is 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 the hard. Hard as well. No, I need I need help, and especially you know what when it was bad when I lost everything for helping everybody uh, after raising millions of dollars for the victims for organizations that supposedly were supposed to help me afterwards. They told me keep keep records of everything, and uh, we will reimburse you later. Uh, when I went to ask for help, they all denied the help, and I raised millions of dollars. You see, you read it on Wikipedia uh with over a hundred million dollars and i didn't took a penny i didn't take a penny a single penny and when i asked for help they all turned their backs on me and then i lost everything i was homeless living under a bridge and then the scandal blew out while i was on the bridge i was still doing interviews i would put a tie and change the tie and go to another interview and didn't say anything about my situation because you know it was embarrassing and uh, somebody saw me and called the uh, local news and they went with the cameras and they they blow out the story all over and uh the governor of new york and the governor of new jersey they got involved and they say this happened to willie that is always in this office fighting for the victims and speaks several languages what would that say about the victims that cannot speak for themselves mm -hmm. and they started an investigation and those organizations all of them had to basically put me back on my feet and during that process i went and i got some therapy because it was just too, too emotional you see yes of course will we will we i mean i know that many of us know the truth but will it ever become public willie do you think everything goes out takes whatever time it takes but everything will always come out I have no doubt about that. Maybe not in my lifetime, maybe in my lifetime, but you know, all I can do is just continue with my mission. That's all I can do. I cannot do anything else. And I want to say thank you for your time, for having me on your show. Uh, and I'm sorry, guys, I have to do other interviews, but for me, it has been great to connect with Chris uh, again after so many years and thank you for being on my presentation when I went there mm -hmm. uh, it's so good to hear from people that saw my presentation uh, so many years ago and they still get impacted so uh, you know I want to say thank you for that and for uh, the work that you're doing and I you know support your fight to get your truth out as well and as a, a veteran uh, I my respects go to you completely well willie it's it's so kind you say but i just want to say on behalf of me and my family thank you so much for your you know the world needs real heroes folks and this is this is one and i i i will be eternally grateful willie thank you ever so much thank you so much thank you thank, for your time thank you for joining us on the bought the t-shirt podcast Thank and thank you, everybody at home, for watching. Cheers, Willie. Cheers. Hello, friend. I hope this finds you well. My name's Chris Thrall. I'm a former Royal Marines Commando, and I fought my way back from chronic trauma and addiction to live, work, and travel in 80 countries across all seven continents, achieving all of my dreams and goals along the way. Now, I pass my simple system on to other people, but I can only help you if you like and subscribe. So please do so, because you get one life, 
if you live it right, one is enough.